Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to one of these Friday, Saturday videos. We don't really have dates on those anymore, but um, we just do them when we want to. And it just happened that I was testing out my live stream a few days ago. Just um, playing around with the settings, just live streaming a little bit to some of my friends actually. And uh, some of you guys just tuned in and came and asked questions, which I did answer to. And one of them was really interesting. Um, the person wanted to know how exactly to create some kind of chess mechanic that you open it and then you give a timer, a real timer, not like, in the, you know, like a 5 seconds delay on an ability, but like an actual timer that persists through game session. So we went ahead and I showed him how exactly I've done it for my game. Right here, if you have a look, we have uh, this high noon thing, which is basically just a chest that you roll. When I click on this, it rolls this value, it gives me some gold, and now I just looted a good amount of gold, that's pretty good. It's saving to the player prep. Now, if you have another way to save, then you can actually use that. And we also have like the place in code where you can input what you're going to be doing. So are you going to roll for gold? Are you going to give the player some kind of special reward? And guys, um, I'm going to stop talking now. We're going to jump right into it. All right, so we're going to be looking at the chess example. Now, I've already got one working in my game. I've got some example to look at during the video as well. But um, let me just show you what I do have in my real game. So it's basically just something you click on and then every 12 hour you receive a free roll. You click on the button and then we do something like that. So I'm basically just showing a timer, I'm receiving a reward. If I exit, I come back, I'm still on the same exact timer, as you can tell. So this is what we're going to be doing. Now obviously we're not going to be looking at the example I have in this game because it's tied up in so many different ways. So we're going to go ahead and just start one from scratch. And we're going to try to put everything into the same object. This way you guys can actually have your own uh, standalone chest object. So that's what we are going to do. The first thing I did is actually create just a new scene. So that's something really, really fresh. There's nothing in here. There's only the main camera. And uh, yeah. So let's start from that. Actually, I will go ahead and just create a new UI and a button. So we're going to start with a simple button. The button is going to be opening the chest or something of the sort. Now, uh, just rearrange your canvas the way you want it. I'll just put a quick image on that. I do not have an image. Wait, yeah, I do have image. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we're going to be putting, I don't know, maybe the first one at the top. Okay, and that's what is going to trigger my chess. Now, let's rename this for something like chess, chess button, whatever. And of course, as always, you just place it the way you want. Um, I'm just going to be doing something really simple, but in the center, make it wide. 300 by 500. No, nope, that's definitely not good looking. Okay, that's my chest button. It's big enough, right? So the button object is uh, what we're going to be using as the base of our object. So that's where our script is going to be located. Let's go ahead and just create that chest object. And um, there is a few things we need. Let's get started right away. So there's a few things we're going to be needing for this. And um, those are, if I can, if you can just remember correctly, we're going to need a function that we call when we click on the button. So private void, no, sorry, public void. It has to be public. We're calling it from a button. And uh, let's just call it something like chest click. So whenever we're clicking on the button and whenever we're opening the chest, this doesn't have to be a button, by the way. If you have something else triggering that chest, um, just go ahead and just do what we're going to be doing in that function. So chest click and when we click on that chest, what we should be doing is uh, save the timestamp actually. Now how are we going to be saving the timestamp? We're going to be using a um, the date time from system I believe. So let's go ahead and just try to type that in, date time, nope, date time. And this is part of using system. So just make sure that you're using system. Now, datetime dot now. And we're going to be saving the amount of ticks. And I think we're going to be saving that as a um, U, U long, actually. Yeah, that could be quite good. Now, let me just show you what this gives us in terms of data. So I'll just put a two string on that just to test it out. And we're going to be linking our function to that very uh, button. Cannot convert u long to a string. Okay, so let's just put it on a normal um, tick value right now. So back on my button, adding a unclick event, I'll just drag and drop this 
object actually the button object and we'll find the chest click let's boot this scene and have a look at the console down here this is the information you get now this is really hard to read if you're uh, if you're like me and you're like a human and such um, <laughs> what this is is actually the amount of ticks of your timer right now so if you have a look down here at uh, the bottom right of my screen it's like 11 2 in the morning right now um, and we do have like the current date as well this is what it represents this actually represents your time your real time your computer time basically so this is always going to be different it always has been different it's a really huge number but that's what it does so it just represent your system um, your system time so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be keeping track of that inside of our player pref or any other save structure you have. So let me just go ahead and do a um, player pref. We're going to save a... Should we save a int? Let me just go ahead and just... We're going to save a, um, a string. So set string actually. And we'll save this as a string. just like that now remember that the first argument is always the key so I gotta give it something here um, last chess open or last chess click so technically what should happen at this time is whenever we click on the chess we save that inside of our um, last chess open key and this way the big number we saw a little bit earlier is going to be represented in our uh, register Okay, so let's keep going. Now what we're going to do is we're going to disable that button whenever we um we're going to disable that button whenever we click on it. So, let's add the unity engine.ui up here and create a private button. This is going to be this button or chess button. So, whenever uh, our chess button, what well, whenever we click on it, then we disable because we don't want to be able to click on it again since we we're going to have like a timer going on. And uh, just to get a reference to that, I'll do a private void start. You could keep your, your button uh, public and just link it manually in the inspector. But I'd like to just have the least amount of public stuff going on. So I'll just get it manually here in a start. So chess button is equal to get component of type button. Now remember, if you're doing it the exact same way as I am right now, your script has to be on the same object as the button so these two components they have to be standing one next to each other well they don't really have to be like next to each other but they have to be on the same object so um, we're getting that and then one, once we click on the chess we're going to one line below hit and we'll do chess button interactable is equal to false this way if we have a look at what's going on we start the game we click here and it's disabled at the same time inside of the reg edit if I can type it right um, let's go have a look at our game right now our game is this one I already had it open so that's my flippy game last chess open and that's the value that's the amount of ticks on the very right hand side not the left side um, on the right side that is the value we are looking at so um, we know that this is save. Now what we're going to do is actually make sure that we re-enable it after clicking on it. Say we're going to put like a delay, a 3 seconds delay, uh, which is something quite small. Then we'll bump it up to like 12 hours later if you want. But we're going to start with like a 3 seconds delay so we can actually test it out. Um, to do this, we need to keep track of that in a update. What I like to do is actually position my update right next to my start. So I'll just cut that and put it here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, and here is what we are going to do. Let's just check: is our current um, is our current button disabled? So if chess button interactable, uh, we can get it this way, or we can also do the is interactable. I think this one works. So if is interactable, that means uh, we can do something. Now what we're going to do is. We're going to put the exclamation mark in front of it. So if it's not interactable, then we're going to look at the time and check, okay, is right now the good moment to be interactable? And a little bit later on, we'll also add a, um, a timer text because, because we like doing things right. So we also add a timer to let the user know um, how long he has to wait. Now, here's the way we do it. So we are going to do, we're going to get a long 
times time. And what we're going to do is equal to this string. And to get this string, we got to do a player pref dot get string. And we're getting the string last chess open, which is the exact same thing we put um, down there. So now that we have the amount of um, ticks we had, and now this is obviously not going to work because we're trying to make a, uh, a long, let's do a U long, we're trying to make a U long out of a string. So to have this work, we're going to have to do a U long dot parse. We're going to have to parse this string. And then this way, we can actually get a U long value out of this string. So once this is this is done, we kept we kept track of um, the previous time that we saved. You could actually be putting that in say um, a field up here. So private u long last chess open, and that's actually better if we do it this way. So um, last chess open is equal to the thing we've got from the um, the player pref. Okay. And let's also set it down here. Now, I know I'm doing it in a weird order, but that's just how it is. So, last chess open at this point is going to be datetime.now.ticks. And I'll move it up one line. And let's actually just swap that. Okay. And this one is a long. Okay, so now let's just cast this as a U long. Okay, just to recap really quickly, we have this last chest open, which uh, we check at the start. So if we do have a value, if we if we open the chest before, one time before, then we do have a value in that. That's like the amount of ticks, which we saw earlier, something with a really, really big number. We know that from the very beginning. And then um, chest click, when we click on the chest, we reset that last chest open to that very value, to the, um, the right now value. And then we set it back on the player pref. And uh, finally, we set the chess to interactable false. Now, what we're going to need to do at this point is take the last chess open and actually just get the difference in between now and that last chess open value. The way we're going to do it is by creating a U long diff, which is just for uh, stands for difference. And we're going to do right now, so date time dot now the ticks minus timestamp or not timestamp but last chess open and just like that we're gonna be casting that as um we're gonna be casting this as a ulong the date and this way we have the difference so if we do a debug.log diff we go in the game press play and we click on the button this is the difference in ticks that uh, we can see. So as we wait longer, the text amount gets higher. All right, so now we do have a difference in between the last time we press and right now. Now what we need to do is actually convert that into MS, so milliseconds. And there is something quite easy you can do um, using the date time, or I think using the time span actually from the C shop, is you are going to create a U long that I just call M for now, and we'll do diff divided by time span dot ticks per millisecond and this is going to give you the actual amount in um, milliseconds so debug.log let's try that again m and this should now be a lot more readable so that's the difference in milliseconds so a thousand is equal to one second. Right now, we've clicked on this button like 10 seconds ago, 12 seconds ago. And using that, we can now know when to toggle it back on. And now let's actually swap this around a little bit. I'll create a flow that I'll call um, seconds left. And what's going to happen this time is we're going to be taking the number we're going to be looking at. So say we're waiting three seconds, then we're going to be taking um, 3000 because 3000 MS is equal to three seconds. We're going to be taking that number and then reduce it by M. So the value we're going to have at the very beginning when we click on the button is going to be 3000. And then as time passes by, that number is going to go down until it reaches zero. At the moment it reaches zero, it means that we're ready to just reopen the chest or um, you know do an action there. 
So we're, we're swapping this around. Uh, let me just go ahead and do that. So float second left is equal to 3000 minus M. And then since we want this in seconds for a uh, formatting purpose when we have the timer, we'll just do a divided by 8000. This way we have the amount of seconds. And like I said, we just do a debug.log seconds left. I like to just check out everything line by line. Um, so like I said right now, when we press on the button, it should start at 3000 and then just go down. Or sorry, not 3000, but 3 because we convert this in seconds. Now once we're below that, we actually mess up our whole thing because we're dividing by something that is um, negative. So, so let's just keep going and um, let's do the simple one. If seconds left is smaller than 0, that means we're pretty much just done here. And if that's the case, we're going to say our button, what's our button name? Chess button dot interactable is equal to true. And we'll also do a return here and you'll see why I do the return because we plan on, on uh, keeping that function going afterward. So we press on the button, we click here. Let me just put that back up. Click here, wait three seconds. And then it should go back up to our trigger stance. And for some reason, it does not. So what exactly is going on? Looks like second left never go below zero, which is kind of impossible, if you ask me. OK, for some reason, I think that this equation right here is being uh, cast as an end, because those are two ends, and then it divided by another end. So for some reason. It does something not cool here, obviously. So what I'll do is just put a float in front of that. And um, hopefully we cast these two number as float. Or if you want to be sure, you can just put a dot zero f here and I'll do the same thing there. So having this completed, I'll just go ahead and play this. And then hopefully we do not get the same error. So we wait one, two, three seconds and it's back up. We can play that again. Three seconds and it comes back. Okay, so we do get like the basic behavior going on. Now what we're going to do is actually start cleaning up things a little bit and making this more uh, enjoyable to look at. So this check over here, this check is something we're going to be putting in another function just to help us out a little bit. We'll go down here and we'll create a private private bull is chess ready or something like that and my phone is just messing up sorry about that is chess ready now this is going to return a boolean and all we're going to be doing is we're going to take all of that put it in here and let's just make sure everything is fine so we do check the difference now if it's below if it's below um, zero instead of doing chess button interactable we're simply going to return through else we return false and you'll see why we do this in a second because I plan on using this somewhere else to make this more uh, readable and also more easy to interact with so let's go back in our update so if the chest is not interactable then we ask okay is the chest ready if it is let's go ahead and just do chest button dot interactable is equal to true so we just moved our function a little bit now the reason I wanted to do this is because I also want to test this out in the start in case we're carrying over from a previous session. So if is chess ready, yeah, actually if is chess is not ready, so if it's not ready, let's go ahead and do chess button dot interactable is equal to false here. Now here is what is going to happen. We are going to need to define somewhere what exactly, what's the amount of time that we should wait. Now I know you guys, uh, if you want to create chess like this, you're not going to be only taking like three seconds. Okay, so next thing to make this more pleasant to actually work with is uh, we're going to be creating a public field that is going to allow you to edit the amount of time you want to wait for. So public float, let's do ms to wait, and uh, by default we'll set it on. That's five seconds. That's not really. Let's just put it on like five seconds for now, and then we'll move on. Like I said, to bigger numbers like. 12 hours. Uh, in the is chess ready, we're going to be replacing the 3000 by ms to wait. Let's also make sure this is a float so we don't get the same problem. 
And just like that, we've created a chess um, that should actually work in between session. Let's test this out in between session, like I said. So if we quickly click on this, we exit. It has not been five seconds yet. And as you can tell, we are now back. So we click on this one, two, three, four, five, and then it's back. So it's really waiting the real amount of time and that's even working in between sessions. So that's fairly cool, right? But um, when it's actually offline, we'd like to have some kind of display. We'd like to have some kind of uh, timer on it. That would be really cool. Let's go ahead and just create that right away. On the same button that we've created at the very beginning, we have this text component. Now let's, I mean, if you don't have it, you can just right click, create a new one. And um, we're going to be turning this into a timer. So I'll just call this chess timer. And let's bump up the font size a little bit. Why not? Let's do a test here. So 12 hour. Um, let's go for 20 minutes and 30 seconds, something like that. We can just bump this just for um, looking at the size of it. That's why I'm inputting some stub values. Maybe change the font so it fits with the rest of my game. Okay, so definitely something like that. That would be quite cool. Now, what we're going to be doing is um, go back on our chess, declare a new private. We'll do it uh, private because, like I said, I just rather have a lot of things private. And that is going to be the chess timer. Now, like I said, if you want to be putting it public, then you can do that and just link it via the inspector. If you decide on putting it private like I do, just make sure it's on the same object. And you know what? It's not actually on the same object. Um, my button is up here, my chess script is there, but then the chess timer is one children below that. So it's right here. So if you want to be putting it public, put it public, you're going to have a field. You can drag and drop your, t your um, text into the field here. But since I like keeping things private, I'll just go fetch it manually. And the way I do this is I'll do chess timer is equal to, uh, let's do a get component in children of type text. And this way I should have a reference to that right away. Okay, now back in our update, and um, earlier I said we're going to be having like a return button here, and that's, I really meant it, so let's just go put it put it back up here. So if the chess is ready, we put the chess on interactable, that's true. And we also call the return value. And since we here, uh, the second it gets back to interactable, let's do chess timer dot text and just put it on blank. So we're not going to be seeing the text when it's, uh, it's ready. Or you can be saying something like ready. Like I said, it's up to you. And the really important thing here is that if it's not interactable, then we make it interactable, we do return because the rest here is going to be setting the timer. So set the timer. Now, let's actually go and um, try to find how much time we have in between <laughs> right now and uh, before the, the, the actual chess gets reopened. And now some of the values that we calculated in it's just ready are going to be reused here. So we kind of wrapped it in the function, but some of that element could be reused. Actually, all of that, I'll just copy it over for now. I know that's, that's not really um, optimal, but for readability purpose, for reading my whole code, I think this would be better. But of course, in terms of performance, I'd rather just keep the values that I've calculated up here. Okay, so let's do a U-long diff. I need the difference. That's cool. The seconds left. I also want that. And now this is the fun part where we just go ahead and we create our timer. Our timer is going to be R right now. The text in our timer, we're just going to put that on R. So R is going to equal zero at the very beginning. Then what we're going to do is say, we're going to tackle the hours first. So R is plus equal, we cast int on um, seconds left, divided by 3000 and um, 3,600. If we have 3,600 seconds, at least that amount, then we're going to have at least one hour. Then let's do a two string and we can 
append that with a character like the H character that would be cool or let's do a string H and then a spacebar and there we go we have the amount of hours just like that now for the minutes let's do minutes and then just below that I like to do seconds left minus equal and then we're gonna be looking do we have at least one hour so we're gonna do the same equation we did up here if we do have a lot at least uh, one hour let's get and remove that by doing a times an hour okay so right now we're removing all the hours from our string and uh, we can move on to minutes as far as minute goes it's very simple we do r plus equal again cast this seconds left as int and we do divided by 60 this time we'll do a two string and uh, what we can do here is uh, if we want at least two digits we'll do a two string and we'll put two digits in here this way we can actually have a look at uh, two numbers even though we're only on a one uh, one digit second so I'll just append that by M and let's do seconds seconds is even more easier we do seconds left modulo 60 and we just take the remain of that so two string again two digits in that plus s now I know this is a little bit complicated but I have another tutorial on timer if this is something that uh, bothers you and uh, here we go we have our timer text just like that we can do r actually we can do timer text or chess timer dot text is equal to r and that is the text we need that's what we need to actually have a timer rolling um, we're going to go ahead and just test this out. Hopefully everything works in a single go. That would be so cool. So right now we're playing the game. Um, the text is not change. And it's because the chess is not interactable when we start the game. And what I feel like doing is taking this chess timer dot text and actually just putting it in the is chess ready call. So if chess is ready, we're going to be saying chess timer dot text is equal to ready then we're going to do a return true. Now this way we should actually change the text as soon as the game starts. So it says ready. We click on it. We wait five seconds. And it's back. Okay, that's fairly cool. Now if we're going to be doing something like 12 hour, it's really easy to calculate. All you're going to be doing, since you're in a mess, all you really have to do is just go ahead and just type in. Okay, so you've got... Um, 60 seconds in a minute then you've got 60 minutes in an hour and since you're in MS then you're gonna have to do times a thousand at one point so that would be equal to one hour right here this uh, big number this three million um, I don't I don't really speak English well that number right here is a single hour so if you want to do that like times 12 that's 12 hour right there so the number we get is this and can we just space yep and as you can tell we're now on a 12 hour cooldown now obviously uh, you're gonna have a different action depending on what you're exactly doing with your game so when you're clicking on the chest this is where you would put the action so down here is where you would give gold to your player or this is where you would roll a dice to know which reward he gets something like that this is actually where you do it I've also used this uh, mechanic in the past for let me just show you really quickly in the real game I've used it to keep track of um, my timer for ads I do have a function in my game if I just show you down here you can watch an advertisement to gain five gold now I don't want my user to be able to spam that so what I do is we click here we play an ad and then the same exact mechanic goes on however i'm not displaying the amount of hours in my timer and guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope this helped you and if it did please leave me a like on the video i really appreciate that as always and uh please leave comments in the comment section below if you do have comments check out the patreon page if you wish that would be very very cool and other than that please subscribe i'll see you in the next video